Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Always fun to dig into this stuff. This time, we're tackling your requests about VMware vSAN alternatives. Lots of buzz around that topic. Absolutely, and your reading list was packed with articles, opinions, the whole nine yards. Sounds like someone's been doing their homework. Well, gotta stay ahead of the curve, right? <laughs> but let's be real, you don't want me rambling on for an hour, do you? You want the good stuff, the need to know, without the fluff. Cut to the chase, I like it. Exactly. So, big picture, your articles all pointed to one major pain point. VMware vSAN's pricing. Yeah, those price tags can be a bit eye-watering for some. No kidding. But it's not just about the cost, is it? There's got to be more to the story. You hit the nail on the head. It's like buying a car, right? Price is important, but you're also thinking about fuel efficiency, safety features, all that jazz. Totally. So in the world of vSAN alternatives, what are those other factors we need to be thinking about? Two big ones come to mind. Flexibility and support. Okay, break it down for me. What makes those two so crucial in this landscape? Sure. So flexibility. Think of it like this. You've got this awesome NVMe drive, top of the line stuff, right? Flexibility means your vSAN alternative can actually use that, take full advantage of it, instead of making you buy a whole new system. Ah, so you're not stuck with outdated tech or forced into a corner just to make things work. Exactly. And then there's support. This is huge, especially for businesses. Oh, yeah, because when something goes wrong, you need a lifeline, not a waiting game. Exactly. We're mm -hmm. talking 24-7 support, experts on standby, ready to swoop in and fix things. Makes sense. So it's about peace of mind, knowing you're covered. Precisely. All right, so with those key factors in mind, let's dive into our first contender, Proxmox with Ceph. This one kept popping up in the articles, often touted as the go-to for the budget-conscious techies out there. For good reason, too. It's yeah. open source, which is music to the ears of anyone watching their wallet. Okay, hold on. Back up for a sec. For those of us who aren't fluent in tech jargon, what does open source actually mean in this context? Good point. Basically, it means the software, in this case Proxmox, is free to use. You can download it, tinker with it, no licensing fees to worry about. So a big win for startups or Anyone who likes saving a buck. Absolutely. Now, Ceph is where things get really interesting. It's what's known as a distributed storage system. Sounds complicated. It's actually pretty cool when you break it down. Imagine your data spread out across multiple servers, kind of like a safety net. I'm intrigued. How does that work? So instead of all your eggs in one basket, Ceph lets you distribute them across multiple servers. Okay, I'm seeing the appeal here. Right. So if one server decides to take a nosedive, no diggy. Your data is safe and sound on the other servers. Talk about peace of mind. And what about scalability? If you need more storage down the line, what then? Piece of cake. You just add another server to the network, and Ceph automatically starts using it. Slick. But let's address the elephant in the room. The articles did mention some potential downsides with Proxmox and Ceph, especially when it comes to support. Right. And that's something to be aware of. So what's the catch? Well, while Proxmox does offer paid support, it might not be the same level of hand-holding you'd get with a bigger player like VMware. So maybe not ideal for those who prefer to have someone on speed dial 24-7. Exactly. And there's also a bit of a learning curve with Proxmox. Meaning? It's not exactly plug and play. You need some technical know-how to really get the most out of it. So maybe not the best choice for tech newbies? Probably not the easiest entry point, no. Proxmox with Ceph, tons of potential, especially for the budget conscious and tech savvy, but maybe not for the faint of heart or those who prioritize round the clock support. I'd say that's a pretty accurate assessment. Now let's move on to contender number two, Starwind VS. Ah, yes, Starwind, known for playing particularly well with Hyper-V. That's what I've heard. So for those considering a jump from, say, VMware to Hyper-V, Starwind could be a good option. It could be a very strategic move, actually. Why is that? Because Starwind doesn't play favorites. It's compatible with both VMware and Hyper-V. Smart move on their part, keeping their options open. Right. It gives them an edge, especially in today's world where flexibility is key. Makes sense. Now, one thing that caught my eye in the articles was the emphasis on hardware compatibility with Starwind. Can you elaborate on that a bit? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Starwind plays nicely with a wide range of hardware, including those fancy NVMe drives we talked about earlier. So no need to ditch your existing setup, which is always a bonus. Exactly. Less e-waste and a happier CFO. It's a win-win. Music to my ears. <laughs> but I do recall a trade-off being mentioned. 
Something about capacity? Ah, uh, yes. The age-old dilemma, reliability versus capacity. Go on. Starwind's big on data security, right? Yeah. One of the ways they achieve that is through mirroring. Mirroring. Basically, it's like having a backup dancer who knows all the moves. If the main dancer goes down, the show goes on. I like that analogy, but I'm guessing that backup dancer takes up space? You got it. That mirroring magic comes with a slight storage overhead. Think of it like this. You need space for both the main data and its reflection. So rock solid reliability, but at the cost of some storage capacity. You got it in one. But here's the silver lining. Starwind is known for its stellar support. Ah, so they make up for it in responsiveness and expertise. Exactly. They're known for being super reliable and knowledgeable, especially during those tricky migrations. So it sounds like Starwind might be a good fit for companies who are already using or considering Hyper-V, prioritize top-notch support, and are okay with a bit of a storage trade-off. I'd say that's a pretty good summary. They value reliability and having that safety net of excellent support. All right, so before we jump into our next contender, any thoughts on what kind of company might not be the best fit for Starwind? Hmm, that's a good question. I'd say if you're on a shoestring budget and every gigabyte of storage counts, Starwind's mirroring approach might not be the most cost-effective option. Makes sense. You've got to weigh the pros and cons. Exactly. It's about finding the right balance for your specific needs and constraints. Well said. All right, on to contender number three. Storage Spaces Direct, or as the cool kids call it, S2D. Catchy, right. It's Microsoft's big foray into the hyper-converged world. They're not just sitting on the sidelines watching the game, they're jumping in the ring. So who exactly is S2D targeting? Who's their ideal customer? Well, if you're all in on Microsoft, I mean, Windows Server, Azure, the whole shebang, S2D is like the comfy slippers of the storage world. Keeping it in the family makes sense. Right. No need to venture into unfamiliar territory. But isn't that a bit limiting? What if you're not 100% married to Microsoft? That's the thing about S2D. It's deeply integrated with Windows, which can be a blessing and a curse. Double-edged sword, I like it. So for those who like to keep their options open, explore different operating systems, maybe S2D isn't the bad fit. It might create some headaches down the line, yeah. Good to know. Now, what about support? That's always a big one, especially when it comes to something as critical as storage. Right, you don't want to be left high and dry when something goes wrong. And the articles seem to hint at some potential hiccups with S2D support, right? Yeah, there's been a bit of a shift in Microsoft's strategy, a push towards the cloud, you know, Azure. Makes sense. Cloud is king these days. Exactly. Now, they haven't abandoned S2D completely, but that proactive, always their support, mm. you might need to be a bit more persistent these days. So more like you got to speak up to be heard, not exactly the white glove treatment you'd expect. You could say that. And another thing to keep in mind is monitoring. S2D is not exactly known for its robust monitoring capabilities. Meaning? Well, imagine an alarm system that doesn't actually make any noise. Not very effective. Exactly. Yeah. S2D might not always be as vocal as other solutions when it comes to alerting you about potential issues. So you might need to be a bit more proactive, keep a closer eye on things. You got it. It's not a set it and forget it kind of deal. Duly noted. <laughs> Okay, let's shift gears to our final contender, Nutanix. They're positioning themselves as the premium, all-inclusive experience. And they don't shy away from that premium label, both in terms of what they offer and what they cost. All right, spill the tea. What does premium actually mean in the world of Nutanix? Think of it like this. One phone number for all your tech headaches. That's Nutanix's unified support in a nutshell. Music to any IT professional's ears. Right. No more bouncing between vendors trying to figure out who's responsible for what. Nutanix handles it all. Streamlined. I like it. And what about ease of use? We all know how frustrating tech can be sometimes. Nutanix gets it. Their management interface is known for being incredibly user-friendly, even for those who aren't exactly tech wizards. So no need to be a coding guru to navigate their system. Precisely. They've prioritized intuitive design and user experience, which is a breath of fresh air. But we all know those perks usually come with a price tag to match. You know the drill. Nutanix is definitely at the higher end of the pricing spectrum. So not exactly the budget-friendly option? Not necessarily. If cost is your primary concern, there might be more budget-friendly options out there. Fair enough. Any other potential downsides to consider with Nutanix? Well, they can be a bit particular about hardware, they have a list of approved hardware they prefer you to use. So you might need to factor in some hardware upgrades or replacements if you're considering Nutanix. It's something to keep in mind, definitely. It's about finding that sweet spot, right? Absolutely. 
balancing those trade-offs. So just to recap quickly for our listeners, we had Proxmox with Ceph, which was all about flexibility and scaling, but maybe a bit more hands-on. Right, definitely more of a DIY approach. Then there was Starwind VS. Yeah. Rocking that Hyper-V compatibility and top-tier support. But that mirroring comes at a price, a bit of a storage trade-off to keep in mind. Can't forget Storage Spaces Direct, Microsoft's own solution, tightly knit into the Windows ecosystem. Cozy for some, limiting for others, it really depends on your long-term plans. And finally, Nutanix, the premium experience with a price tag to match. Unified support, user-friendly, but they do have their preferences when it comes to hardware. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. What's the key takeaway for our listener who's now thinking, okay, which one's right for me? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And the truth is, there's no one size fits all answer. Everyone loves a simple solution, but it's rarely that straightforward. Exactly. It all boils down to understanding your specific needs, priorities, and those pesky constraints we all have to deal with. Constraints like budget, existing infrastructure, all that fun stuff. Exactly. So first and foremost, are you deeply embedded in the Microsoft world? Windows Server, Azure, the whole nine yards. Because if you are, S2D might seem like the obvious choice. It could be. But what if you're thinking about exploring other options down the line? That's where that tight integration with Windows might become a bit of an obstacle. Good point. Flexibility for the future is crucial. Absolutely. And then there's support. How critical is it for you to have that 24-7 hand-holding experience? Some folks can't rest easy without it. Totally. And for them, a solution like Starwind or even Nutanix, despite the higher price tag, might be worth its weight in gold. Peace of mind is priceless, as they say. Exactly. And of course, let's not forget the almighty budget. How much wiggle room do you have? Are you working with a blank check or trying to stretch every dollar? Budgetary constraints can really narrow down those options. For sure. Proxmox with Ceph starts to look very appealing when you're trying to keep those costs down. Absolutely. So it's about finding that sweet spot, that intersection of what you need, what you want, and what you can realistically afford. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's like choosing the right hiking boots. Okay. I like this analogy. Go on. You wouldn't wear sandals to climb Everest, right? Definitely not. Exactly. You need the right gear for the journey ahead. And the same goes for your vSAN alternative. Think about where you see your infrastructure in five years. Are you heading to the cloud? Sticking with on-premises? Going hybrid? That long-term vision should be your guiding star. It's about making the right decision today to set yourself up for success tomorrow. I love that. So for our listeners out there, don't rush the decision. Take your time, weigh those options, and don't be afraid to ask questions. There are tons of resources available, and this deep dive was just the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. This was your crash course, your jumping off point. Now go forth and explore. And remember, knowledge is power. That wraps up our deep dive into VMware vSAN alternatives. We hope you found it insightful and maybe even a little bit entertaining. Always fun to geek out about this stuff. Until next time, keep those brains engaged and those curiosity engines firing. <laughs>